going to talk about some of the metabolic processes in the cell today that are used to produce ATP. And one of those processes we're going to discuss is a process called glycolysis. Now, if you were to look inside a cell, and let's say this is like the nucleus of the cell, we know that one of the organelles that's mainly responsible for the production of ATP would be the mitochondria. Okay. However, we are able to also produce ATP in just the cytoplasm of the cell through this process of glycolysis. So we can take any kind of carbs and through glycolysis, we have this ATP production that's going to occur. Now, anytime we use this type of production of ATP in the cytoplasm, I want you to know that this is an anaerobic mechanism. It does not require oxygen. However, when we start talking about how ATP is made in the mitochondria, this is an aerobic process and oxygen is necessary. So we're going to start talking first about the anaerobic processes, but once we move into the mitochondria, those will be all aerobic metabolic processes. Okay? So let's start out talking about carbohydrates and how we convert these into energy. And we're going to start with a glucose molecule. And everywhere I put an arrow, just assume that there is at least one or possibly multiple enzymes. I'm not going to ask you to memorize the enzymes, but I do want you to memorize these steps. Because somehow I have a feeling you might see something similar to this. I'm not saying for sure, but I just sort of have a really strong ESP-like feeling uh, on July 3rd. Okay, just, just saying maybe, so, you know, just letting you know. Glucose, okay, now this is a six-carbon molecule. And as soon as glucose enters into our cell, we're going to convert this to glucose 6-phosphate, which means that our cell is going to put a phosphate on carbon number 6. Now, the reason that this happens is because you know that insulin opens gates and glucose diffuses in. And the problem is that insulin stays on that gate for a while, and the gate stays open, and there is potential for glucose to diffuse up. So we need to add a phosphate to this glucose molecule to make it larger, so now it can't fit through the gate, it can't get out of the cell, and it's going to stay in and we can use this. Now where we're going to get this phosphate from to put on carbon number six is we're going to take it off of an ATP. And we're going to produce ADP plus a phosphate, and this is the phosphate that we put <coughs> on carbon number six. Now once we form glucose 6-phosphate, we're going to change the structure just a little bit, and we're going to produce fructose 6-phosphate. So we change glucose into fructose. Now, I know this isn't on your handout, and I don't expect you to fill this in, but I just want to show you something. Remember the sugar, sucrose, that we eat a lot in our diet. Remember, it is made up of glucose plus fructose. So we can use fructose in this pathway to make energy, or excuse me, glucose in this pathway. But then what happens to fructose? It just sort of kind of gets wasted and thrown away, and that's just crazy. Uh, not a good idea for the body. So this fructose can actually be converted into, inside our cell, fructose 6-phosphate. So we can convert glucose into fructose 6-phosphate. And we can convert fructose 
into fructose 6-phosphate. And then all the rest of the steps from here on out can happen for either glucose or fructose. And so we're able to save some energy and be able to make more ATP with both of these molecules. Okay? So from fructose 6-phosphate, we're going to produce fructose 1,6-diphosphate. So where did we just put the second phosphate? Which carbon? The first one. Yeah, carbon number one. So now we have a phosphate on carbon number one and carbon number six. And again, where we got this phosphate from was from another ATP molecule. So we took this phosphate, we just pulled off of ATP, and this is the one that we put on carbon number one to make our fructose 1,6-diphosphate. Okay, so I'm just running out of room here, so I'm just going to rewrite this up here. So this is one, two, three, one, two, three. So now the phosphate is on carbon number three. And so we're going to call this new molecule glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And we have two of these. just can't spell things. I have a daughter who has really bad dyslexia and spelling is just not her forte and no matter how hard she tries there are just some things she's just not able to spell correctly. So I understand this is a problem but for those of you who do this and you don't have any serious problems it is also my evil intention that if you spell it out 25 times you probably will learn how to spell it too. Yeah, that's what they used to make us do in like elementary school, rewrite those words over and over and over again until you learned how to spell them. Okay. So, uh, oh, by the way, I heard something really cool the other day, which unfortunately for you guys, it's too late, but I guess they're going to start putting cursive writing back into elementary school, which is about frigging time. Because I watch you guys write, and all you do is print. And I feel so sorry for you that they did not teach you how to cursive write. 
it works so much better and it's so much easier and goes so fast and there's so many people who don't know how to do it and so anyway maybe your kids will know how to do this now all right so uh, also on your exam you may abbreviate things so if you don't want to write phosphate out over and over and over again, you can write it as PO4, or if you really want to abbreviate, you can also write it as P with a little I there that stands for inorganic phosphate, which is what PO4 is. You can abbreviate, you can abbreviate ATP, you can abbreviate ADP, but you have to have a legend. So that anything that you abbreviated, you are spelling out in your legend. So if you write ATP down, you will have in your legend somewhere on your exam, adenosine triphosphate. If you abbreviate PO4, you're going to have to tell me that PO4 means phosphate. So if you're <coughs> filling this out, just turn it over. You make a little legend for all three pages so that I can look to see that you have spelled it correctly. Okay, any questions about that? All right, so let's go back to this. So now from glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, we are going to produce 1,3-diphosphoglycerate. Glyceric acid. Depends on how you want to write it. I don't care. You could do it with ATE or you could do it with ic acid. So this ATE at the end is the same thing as writing it ic at the end with an acid. Same exact thing. Okay, so now what we've done is we've added another phosphate to carbon number one here. But this time, we didn't get the phosphate from ATP. I don't know why we didn't do this to begin with, but we just take a phosphate that's floating around in the cytoplasm and add it to carbon number one of this molecule. One other thing that we do is we're going to take two hydrogen atoms off of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and add it to a molecule called NAD. And we're going to have NADH plus H. Glyceric 
acid. Now what that means here is that we have taken one of the phosphates off of carbon number one and we're going to add this phosphate. So we've taken a phosphate off and we're going to add it to ADP and we'll make our very first ATP molecule, finally. In the next step, we're going to move the phosphate just from carbon number three to carbon number two. And so we're going to have two phosphoglycerate. Or two phosphoglyceric acid. Questions so far? Yeah. What happens from the three phosphoglycerate to the two phosphoglycerate? All we're doing is moving the carbon from three to two, and then this one, the carbon's moved to one, and there's a little bit of change in the molecular structure. So the phosphate just moved over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of it here, or at least one of them, 
you don't have to fill out, okay? Because it's just a duplicate. And I think if you can fill out one half, you can probably fill out the other half, okay? So just keep in mind, all you have to do is fill out one side of this. You don't have to do both. All right, so let's talk about the next step, which is what we would call the intermediate step. So our pyruvic acid, or our pyruvate, has entered into our mitochondria, and we're going to convert this into a molecule called acetyl coenzyme A. muscles to store it. And this is why, you know, when you're running and you get really tired, you start to get that tick in your side, you know, and it starts to hurt really bad. And this is also why your muscles ache when you build up a lot of lactic acid. So when you start to get that tick in your side, one of the things that's really important is breathe really deep. Get slow down, get more oxygen in. Because if you can get more oxygen in, you can convert this lactic acid back to pyruvic acid. But oxygen has to be present for this to occur. So you have to have plenty of O2 to get this back to pyruvic acid. And then, of course, we can convert it back into acetyl coenzyme A and keep going through the process of making ATP. But if you don't have a lot of oxygen, you're going to build up this lactic acid, which is also why people are really, really sore the next day when they've just started to exercise again after a period of time because they've built up so much lactic acid. By the way, a really good way to get the lactic acid out of the muscles is to stretch. As much stretching as you can possibly do after an exercise kind of brings the muscles out and helps to push that lactic acid out of the muscles and turn it back into energy because we're going to use that lactic acid in the other steps when we turn it back into pyruvic acid to get more energy from it. Now, by the way, in this step with pyruvic acid, we're going to make a waste product. This is the first waste product we've made. This waste product is carbon dioxide. So in this process, we can have some CO2 buildup. Another thing that's going to happen is we're going to take two hydrogens from our pyruvic acid and 
and we're going to take these two hydrogens and add it to another NAD to get another NAD H plus H. And remember, we'll talk about this in a little bit, we can use this NADH plus H in order to make three ATP molecules. Now this intermediate step here is going to happen twice because we have two pyruvic acid molecules, so we'll end up with two acetyl coenzyme A molecules. Okay. Now those acetyl coenzyme A molecules are going to be able to enter into the next cycle, which is called the citric acid cycle. And this is still happening in the mitochondria. Okay? So we're going to start with acetyl coenzyme A. <coughs> and acetyl coenzyme A is going to bind to a chemical called oxaloacetate. And when these two bind, we're going to form a molecule called citric acid, which is what this cycle is called. This is the citric acid cycle that we're going to go through. Sometimes you'll hear people refer to this as the Krebs citric acid cycle. That's because Dr. Krebs came up with this.
by taking a phosphate off, and we're going to get GDP plus a phosphate. And so, of course, GTDP is guanosine diphosphate. GTP. So I'm just going to rewrite it here. And we're going to add this to an ADP. And we'll get our only ATP molecule. From succinate, we are going to produce fumarate. And in this step, we're introduced to a new chemical. We're going to take two hydrogens off of succinate and add them to FAD to get FADH plus H. FAD stands for flavin adenine dinucleotide. We can use the two hydrogens on FAD a little bit later to be able to make two ATP molecules. So on NAD, we can use the two hydrogens to make three ATP. On FAD, we can use the two hydrogens to make two ATP, and I'll show you how that's done. oxaloacetate. However, we're also, to do that, going to take two hydrogens off of malate and add them to another NAD to form another NADH plus H, and you're done with the citric acid cycle. This handout that I gave you is also on uh, the Bloodhound website, so if you want to print this out again, over and over again, just keep filling it out. Probably the best way to practice it, just keep doing it over and over, okay? Uh, you can do that. <laughs>